Hey everybody, so today I want to go through some recent makeup releases and give you my opinions about them. It really is that simple. So I've done this like type of video a few times and I don't necessarily want to call it an anti-haul because there are some products that I genuinely like and like might buy. I never have, but maybe someday I might. It's not necessarily an anti-haul, it's just more of like my opinions, but it usually ends up being an anti-haul, but I'm not trying to hate on like all of this. For sure some of it, I talk a lot of shit. I really do. Yeah, I just feel like I want to say that because I feel like I'm like really critical and it's not so much that I'm shit talking all the time, sometimes I really am just talking myself out of something that I'm interested in and that I kind of want but I know I don't need. So let's just go ahead and get started. I am going to go through trend mood but I'm also going to go through the indie mood and maybe indie makeup spotlight too. I'm not going to talk about everything, I'm just going to talk about what I have thoughts about. And let's just get started. Oh my god, what an intro. Lady Gaga's brand House Laboratories has a l hybrid lip oil and stain. Love that. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. Right off the bat, love this. I don't always love lip oil just because of how quickly it absorbs or like goes away, but I do love a good lip stain. Ooh, I'm interested. The shade range looks pretty good. It swatches really beautifully on every skin tone. They're $24. <laughs> Dude, once like, so like an eyeshadow palette, usually like up to like 40-ish dollars, I feel like is reasonable. But for like a singular product, like a lip or like an eyeliner or a brow, I feel like anything above $20 is just like, immediately a no for me because that is one product and unless you're gonna wear this every single day and that is your lip i just feel like that's so much money and during a pandemic when we're all wearing masks like i have not purchased lip products that i can think of the most recent one was purchased in like december nobody's really trying to buy lip products right now because we're all wearing masks like we're not trying to show off our lip color to anybody because nobody should be looking at anybody's mouth right now if they were 10 bucks i would pick one up for sure, but for $24, no thank you. Oh, this is brand new. I have not seen this yet. ColourPop has more uh, five pan palettes. I do love ColourPop. Like when I buy makeup, usually it's ColourPop because they're just so affordable. These are 10 bucks each for five shades. That's pretty good. These color stories look really good. The last time they had these five pan palettes, they were all pretty neutral and they looked really gorgeous, but I don't know, I have a hard time buying neutral eyeshadows just because how many brown tones do you need? I don't know. This cashmere one looks really, really pretty. I don't think I have a lot of lilac shades like that. And of course I'm drawn to the high society greens and yellows. These all look really stunning. I do love the ColourPop formula. It's so easy to work with. It's never given me any trouble that I can think of. And I mean, these look good. And ColourPop is doing more like quads and stuff. Like they're definitely playing around with like the format of their palettes, which like, I don't really mind. People seem to be kind of over the giant palettes and wanting a much more like curated color story. So, I mean, I'm here for this. I don't think that I will buy any of these unless I'm in a situation where I'm making an order anyway and I just need like one more thing to get free shipping or something. But these look really pretty. Hourglass has liquid lipsticks. It's a lip mousse. Cause I was gonna say, who wants liquid lipsticks anymore? Like everyone is over the liquid lipstick, but this is like a mousse, like a velvety texture. So this is like the soft matte lip cream from NYX. Hourglass is the only luxury brand that I've ever splurged on. I do love Hourglass powders. They are some of the best. Yeah, dude, this just looks like the soft matte lip cream. How much is this? $36. Don't do that. Don't spend your money on that. Dude, once again, why are these brands launching lip products right now? We're all wearing masks. It's so silly. And to charge $36 for something that nobody's gonna see unless you take a selfie with it and post it, you should not be showing anybody your lips right now in person. Okay, people keep talking about how cute this SpongeBob collection is and maybe I am just a Squidward deep down inside because I don't find this cute. I find this to be like, kind of tacky and ugly. I mean, I grew up with Spongebob, you know what I mean? There's kind of a nostalgia factor for me, but it's not doing it for me. The idea of like a makeup sponge that is shaped like Spongebob, kind of cute, except it's a square, so I don't know how well that's gonna work on the face, but cute idea. 
And I feel like Wet n Wild had that idea. Spongebob, makeup sponge, now we need a Spongebob collection. But I feel like they just didn't really know where else to go from there because they just put Spongebob's face on a kabuki brush and called it a day, please. And this, that like burger thing, that like brush cleaner burger thing, that is the last thing I want sitting by my sink. It's not my vibe, it's not for me. I, like, I guess a lot of people have got really excited about this and it just doesn't do anything for me personally. And I have not tried Wet n Wild's eyeshadow formula, but I can't imagine it is really that good. I don't know, how cheap is it though? Okay, it's 15 bucks for how many shades? For 18 shades, I don't know. I feel like you have to really love Spongebob for something like this. Hollow Taco Nail Polishes, here we go. So this is something that I actually might purchase. Um, not this set, just because I don't need that many, but I'm getting really into nails and I'm. these are just press-ons because I just needed to use them, but I'm having like a lot of fun like playing with my nails that I've never had before. And I know Hollow Taco is like one of the best. It's like pretty much unanimously agreed upon that like they are one of the best. They're $14 each, so that's a little bit pricey, but right now I really love the ILNP, it stands for I Love Nail Polish. Um, I really love them, and they do kind of like the holographic thing, and they are about like $13 plus shipping, so they're like a very similar price. I feel like this is fair for like, you know, what it is. Pretty comparable to other polishes on the market like this. I love this. There's not a lot really catching my eye lately. I mean, I'm only like three days backwards in time on trend mood right now, but I love this Aristocats thing. So this is like the opposite of like the Spongebob situation. Like the Aristocats is pulling me in with the nostalgia because that was one of my favorite movies growing up. Even as like a tiny baby child, like cats have always been my favorite obsessed with cats, obsessed with kittens. So I would watch the Aristocats just like over and over and over again. So this is very cute and it it's like pulling my heartstrings a little bit, but this palette, I hate it. <laughs> uh, I hate that it's a book and I hate the way that the shades are laid out. It. I really hate large palettes that are jumbled. Like pick a struggle. Either you're gonna have a jumbled smaller palette like do I have an example? Okay, like here, this is the Divinity palette from Shroud. You get eight shades and you get what you get and it's not like organized in a gradient, it's just kind of here it is, you know? Technically, I would consider this more of like a jumbled color story, but it's not overwhelming because it's a smaller palette. But when you have a large palette that doesn't seem to be organized at all, like they just threw colors at the wall and just wherever they stuck is where they put it in the palette, I hate that. The paw print thing is really cute. What brand is this? Makeup Revolution. So their formula is hit or miss from what I understand. I've never actually tried their eyeshadow formula because I don't want to spend the money on something that might not be that good. I don't know. It's cute, but I will not spend any money on it. Wait, is this brush uh, in a paw shape? That's cute. I'm trying to see this brush. Not gonna lie. Um, I kind of want that brush because it looks like a little paw or like a little cat nose. Okay, everyone has already ripped these KKW um, eye duos to shreds. Uh, so there's not much I can really add to the conversation except every time KKW or Kylie or I guess Kris Jenner has a thing now, anytime anything from that family comes up, I automatically like it could be literally it could be the best color story made specifically for me. It could be the best thing I've ever seen. And I would say, fuck that shit, because fuck the Kardashians. The whole, their whole existence is meaningless. So that aside, they're selling you a highlight and contour shade for $24 for the eyes. So they took a, a highlight contour duo, which for the face should be about $24, and they just shrunk it into eyeshadow size. It's just, you know, obviously a cash grab. Every single fucking thing they do is a cash grab. Every single fucking thing they do is poorly thought out, it's uninspired, and it's trash. And that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, so here are the ColourPop quads that I was talking about. I like that they're trying different packaging and they're trying different styles and they're trying different ways to organize their palettes. And I do like that they're trying different things and it's feeling like a lot less monotonous. Like for a while, ColourPop was just releasing so much that it kind of became a blur. It was kind of the same thing over and over again. So I, I do like this because the packaging is very different for ColourPop and they have done the quad thing a couple times, but not 
a ton. These look so fucking pretty too. Like I want all of these. <laughs> Will I buy them? Maybe. If I'm already making a purchase and I need something else, maybe. Oh, and then more ColourPop. I mean, I skipped ahead quite a bit in trend mood, but there's the new mascara from ColourPop that's like a very defining natural mascara that's really not up my alley. I don't really care. I love the Lash Princess in the green tube. It's like $4 or $5. I'll probably never stray from this, to be honest. But these shadow sticks, these color sticks, I don't really use products like this very often. And in the past when I've had like shadow stick like products, I just don't really get enough use out of them to justify buying them. Um, they just tend to dry out by the time I've only used them like four times. And that's just, that's just my fault because I don't fucking use them. But I don't know, I'd be interested to try them, but I can't justify spending money on something that I know that I'll only use a couple times. They look really pretty though. Like this mint shade looks gorgeous. This bright yellow, that is what I wish they would have put in the Lemon Cello collection instead of using like two of basically the same shimmery yellows. I wish they would have put this yellow in there. Okay, so Benefit is not cruelty free, but I just, have thoughts about this. Normally I don't, I try not to talk about like non cruelty free things, but this is so stupid. So they have these horoscopes, which is supposed to be like a horoscope. It's weird to me that they did earth, fire, air, and not water. They left out all the water signs, which is very strange. Obviously this is just like a marketing scheme because people are so into it right now and people are so into their whole chart and they make it their personality for benefit to try to capitalize on that now and then to just leave out an entire like group of people, the water signs, just first of all weird. Like, what do they have against the water signs? I don't know. Second, um, don't buy things just because it has, like, your sign on it. Like, okay, I'm gonna expose myself, but I'm guilty of doing this. I have a Gemini eyeshadow, like, single from ColourPop, and I don't like the shade. I've used it maybe two times, maybe. It's just not a shade I like. I mean, I like the little packaging. I think it's, like, a cute little design, but I bought it because it's the Gemini shade. So I'm exposing myself here, okay? Like, I'm not trying to come for anybody if you're, if you do stuff like that, but to buy something because the marketing team put Gemini on it and you think it was made for you, I mean, you're, you're kind of just falling for the trap, right? I think Benefit in general sucks so much ass just all the time, but okay, aside from the fact that they left out a whole sign or they left out a whole like, group of signs and it's just a marketing ploy. The product itself looks like it fucking sucks. So it says that there's exclusive shades. So fire says exclusive blaze, but then air says exclusive blaze and solstice, which is also in fire. Like how can you say there's an exclusive shade in one of the palettes, but it also exists in another one of the palettes. Also, I don't understand why they did it. Like, first of all, they did three instead of four. I can't get over the fact that they left out the water signs, but why would you do that instead of just doing, if you want to do three palettes like this for the face, why won't you do light, medium, and deep skin tones? Because all of these are made for a light to medium skin tone. What the fuck benefit? Every single thing about this is just wrong and I'm starting to get a little mad. So I'm gonna move on. Fuck Benefit. This palette from Rare Beauty looks really pretty. I like the pan shapes. Um, I like the color story. I feel like it could give you a really pretty glam look. That's all I feel about it. I mean, that's cool. Good for you, Selena Gomez. I hope you're doing well. Um, this is not for me. Rare Beauty as a brand is intriguing. It's like they kind of want to be Glossier, but they kind of want to be a little bit more of like an artistry version of Glossier. I'm here for it. It's just not like a brand for me. I don't know, but I do like the little moon pans. I think it's really cute and uh, yeah, it looks nice. Oh my god, this Fenty gloss. Everyone has already roasted this for obvious reasons. We're in a pandemic, don't release a lip product in the first place, but to release a lip product that you have to put your finger in and then touch your mouth with, not the time, not the place, Fenty. Fenty has been kind of like swinging and missing for me lately because they released that, um, it was like a tinted 
moisturizer or something that had the atrocious shade range and now they're releasing this weird like petri dish of a product i don't know what's going on over at fenty but i hope they get it together the mary jane palette looks really pretty this is definitely for a certain type of person someone who likes like the grungy dark smoky eye kind of looks why is this the third marijuana themed palette that melt has like come out with I find that to be kind of weird. They had the Smoke Sessions 420 and now the Mary Jane palette. Is this a thing they do every year? I don't really know. I don't know why they keep doing like weed things, but I don't know, I'm here for it. It looks really pretty. These glittery thingies look really pretty. Are these like glitter liners or something? Um, Yeah, just glitter gels. Those look really pretty. I love Melt, but they're so expensive. So um, that's, that's all I know about that. This ColourPop Styling Wax. Oh my god, there's so much ColourPop. Like, I get it. There's definitely a market for this type of product right now. The ABH Brow Freeze was such a hit. And maybe I just need to try this product to fully understand why it is so good. But I don't know. I use a brow gel already. And I feel like how can a product like this be better when it's kind of messier. I just feel like it, it would be messier, right? And you'd have to like constantly be cleaning off a spoolie or using a disposable spoolie, which is gonna create waste. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of it. This looks pretty. Herbivore Cloud Jelly Vegan Collagen. I'm into collagen lately. I found a vegan collagen supplement, so I've been taking that. Dude, I'm getting kind of into skincare. Oh, wait, oh, hold on. This is made out of mushrooms, so I'm gonna just keep scrolling because I'm gonna throw up. I hate mushrooms. Oh, the NYX Tetris. So this was announced like right after my previous thoughts about releases video, and I wish that I could have included it like right away, just because the thoughts that I've had about this palette have already been said by other people, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. It's fucking way too big. I posted about it when I saw it. It's a travesty. Tetris is my favorite video game, so I'm taking this personal, okay? I am personally offended. It's been keeping me up at night because how can you have a Tetris eyeshadow palette that fucking looks like this? Each of the Tetraminos is already a shade. It's already a color. Like NYX. NYX made this. Tetris is an already existing color story, right? So all NYX needed to do, if they wanted to have like the different Tetraminos, they could have had like, so like the long one is like the blue one. They could have had four different shades of like that blue teal kind of shade. And then they could have used the other Tetraminos to kind of just create like a fucking rectangle because that's literally what you do in Tetris. And they could have made each Tetramino four different shades of whatever like it already fucking was in the game. And if they wanted to add different shades, like they could have, but the way that they have it organized, it doesn't, this is not a Tetris themed eyeshadow palette. This is an ugly eyeshadow palette and they put the Tetris logo on it. And I'm personally offended. I am so upset by this. This did not need to exist like this. Ooh, it's just so fucking bad. I can't, like, there's not even a nice thing that I can say about this. It's truly awful. Okay, I'm gonna head over to the Indie Mood and just see if there's anything over there that I wanna talk about. So Terra Moon Cosmetics is a brand that I really wanna try. These just look really pretty. I don't have any multi-chromes at all in my collection. I have some duochromes that just exist in palettes, but I really wanna try Terra Moon. This one, Lois Cosmetics, their Underworld palette. I saw this on Twitter and it blew up. This went viral and I completely understand why. This is so beautiful. It's like a grungy spring color story. It's so fucking pretty. I went on their website and they have a lot of different palettes that look really pretty. They have liquid shadows. They are a UK brand, but the shipping to get to America is not that bad. This is just so pretty. Everything about this is done so well. Yeah, I mean that I, I don't have any thoughts about it except for like I immediately fell in love with it when I saw it and I think it looks really pretty. Lethal Cosmetics, these, these look so pretty. These glitch um, liquid shadows, they're so expensive though. They're like 20 something dollars. And like I said, for a single product that I'm not gonna use every single day all the time, that's a liquid shadow that's gonna dry out within a few weeks probably. Just too much money, but these look so pretty pretty. I'm ready to be done. <laughs> I feel like I've talked about everything. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about all this. Um, I talk out of my ass a lot because I'm talking about a lot of brands that I've never actually tried. And um, I don't know, I feel like I've actually really liked a lot of what 
I talked about today. Um, I definitely was not as critical as I usually am. Will I be spending any money on any of this? Probably not. I don't know. It has to be so unique and just so worth it and so innovative and new for me to feel like it's worth it for me to spend money on makeup when there's other things like rent that I need to spend my money on. So there's that. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what else you wanna see from me. I'm kinda of open to whatever, so just let me know. All of my social media will be linked down below. Let's be friends. And as always, I just wanna say thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.